of techtalk.travel. Uh, today's guest is Ben Stevenson from Impala. Ben, great to have you on the show. Thanks for joining us. Great to be here. Thanks for the invite. Let's get started by talking a little bit about your background. Um, you've been now with Impala, or well, you started Impala about two years ago, if my memory serves me correct. Yeah. And uh, I'd like to get from you your personal background, and then how was it that you came into uh, coming up with the idea of Impala? What started the process for you? Sure. So, I mean, I think actually I have a fairly um, a fairly kind of random background entry into hotel technology. Um, so I was, I guess as a 14 year old, I was like the, the stereotypical like geeky 14 year old kid that was you know, coding in his bedroom. Um, and I was building like online games, that kind of thing, building computers, online games. Um, and then I kind of hit the age of like 16 and realized that like found girls um, and realized that this was like, you know, building online games was never going to get me anywhere. So I gave up on that and I started, uh, started doing other things, like started playing rugby, that kind of thing. Went to university to, uh, to play rugby, to, uh, to, um, to do languages, or study languages. Um, and then various kind of family circumstances kicked in and, and I left after two years. Um, and so at that point in time, I had probably half a French degree and my French is, was much worse than anyone that's watching this currently. Um, and so I went home to, for family circumstances, I went back to the north of England, which is where I'm originally from. Um, and let me tell you, there is nothing that's like less useful in getting a job than being able to speak a bit of French in the north of England, I right? I can imagine. Not too many employers looking for that. Um, and so like rather than kind of, you know, uh, go to the job center, my, I remembered, hey, you know what, like I can build websites. Um, and so I started to do that and it seemed like at that point in time that that was like a, a fairly decent lucrative career. Um, uh, from that point went, you know, various different jobs as a software engineer, uh, kind of moving a bit into more specific back-end systems for actually like vehicle, uh, vehicle hire firms really. Um, and then through various different things, met someone that owned a hotel. Um, and so fairly quickly was my eyes were opened up to this world of um, hotel technology through this one hotel, um, Blake's Hotel, it's in London, it's like a, it's a, it's a really nice boutique hotel in, mm -hmm. in Kensington in London. And so I was sat, uh, one day we were sat in that, in that hotel having coffee and we were talking about like what, um, you know, what projects I might work on. Um, and I was kind of introduced to the PMS. And I looked at this and as a, um, as a software engineer, building modern kind of cloud technology to see what was like a very, I don't want to mention it by name, but like a very old fashioned legacy system. I'm sure everyone can imagine what it is yep. running in this hotel. I was like, this is insane. Like, yep. this is crazy. How hasn't it changed? Um, and so from then kind of I got bit by the bug um, and, and that's how I kind of entered hotel technology. Okay. Um, so originally, if I'm correct, Impala uh, I, I, uh, orig originated to be a PMS, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then you decided to change tact. Yeah, so I think we had some, so we started and we looked at the problem and we were like, there's this, the, these legacy systems, super difficult to, um, to use. They don't look like software, modern software. Let's build like a, a great looking modern open PMS. Um, and we did that and we, we actually built the PMS. We had a number of customers, some small hotels in, in the UK. Um, and it became pretty clear very quickly to us that this was not, first of all, that there were other people doing similar things. I mean, you know, if you look at that, there's some, some really great modern PMS. Yeah. Um, and the second thing was, is that actually like, this is like a business you really have to commit to. Like, I, I'm not saying that in terms of like, I'm not committing to my current business. Yeah. I just mean you have to heart and soul want to build great front desk software. It's gonna take you 10 years to build like, even the even a modest like level of functionality, it's going to take you ten years to then sell it to any hotel. Um, and you know, I'm not a hotelier, so like, how can I solve that problem well? Um, you know, I guess the the guys at Muse, Richard, you know, they come yeah. from the hotel background. Yeah, yeah. So when like a hotelier says, oh, you know, the system needs to do such and such, I know you need to be able to split a booking. Like he immediately understands what yeah. that is, yeah. how to implement it. Yeah. The guy didn't. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So we, anyway, so we looked at the we looked at the problem, we looked at the the ecosystem and. And actually, for us, the thing that we knew how to solve, the, the thing that, was kind of, that we were passionate about was solving 
um, this, this problem of like getting data out of a PMS. So many different systems, super fragmented. Anyone that wants to play in the space, anyone that wants to sell anything to a hotel, has to build so many different connections. Mm. Um, and, and so that's the problem that we, we turn around and said, okay, this is what we'll solve. Yeah, and now that, that that's the direction you're going in, um, what, who along the way was it, or I'm sure there was a various number of people, um, who gave you the best advice moving move, to say, hey, look, maybe PMS is not the right direction. Sure. Perhaps consider these challenges within the industry and given your background, maybe they're a better approach. Were there any specific uh, individuals or, or even companies when you spoke to them sure. that perhaps said, yeah, you know, you're really going to be struggling in that hmm. space. It's very competitive. And as you said, to build a good PMS, you need to really understand the industry and, the, and what goes behind it hmm. and also the time that you need. Yeah. Um, so who gave you the guidance and who were the kind of the, 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 the companies or, or, or even individuals that perhaps said to you, let's try this option or maybe go that, that route? Sure. So, I mean, I think if I were to list everyone that told us not to do it, not to build a PMS, then that would take the 20 minutes itself, right? Right. But, I mean, specifically, you know, when you know, we had the benefit of we went through a, a very hospitality focused technology accelerator in Berlin and we met lots of people, lots of very smart, much smarter people than I am um, that could advise us and help us. Um, and so, you know, when I think back and I think about, you know, looking at like a you know, David Turnbull, Carson Booth, Ulu Palau, Wilco Weber, you know, people that were, you know, so, you know, either turn around and said, this is a terrible idea, you don't want to get involved in this, or maybe like some that were softer that were like, oh, hey, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe take a look at the market and make sure this is what you want to do. Yeah. Um, I think, so there's a lot of people that, that kind of advise us that. I think the one really kind of, um, the really, really powerful moment where we decided, okay, this isn't for us, myself and my co-founder, Charlie, was we'd, we'd spoken to a lot of people and, and they'd said, you know, what's the niche that you're aiming at? And we said, oh, you know, there's, look, there's lots of um, legacy systems that are selling to big chains. There's lots of um, small, you know, small young systems that are selling to independent hotels. Like there's really this bit in the middle where there's like national level chains or, or groups that, that are underserved, that are overserved by legacy players, underserved by cloud players. We can aim for that. Um, and I sat down with, uh, I sat down with Wilco and, and I remember him turning around and saying, actually, you know, that's like the exact niche that you're describing. I'll tell you exactly what's going to happen. They are going to have so many demands and not enough cash to pay for the demands. And we discovered that pretty quickly. Right. Um, that, you know, that this, the middle ground was that uh, if you're, a, if you're a, a national level chain, you might be overserved by the legacy players, but actually you still need quite a lot of that stuff, mm. um, quite a lot of the functions that are in those systems. Um, and so, you, you know, you have to pay that kind of price for it. Our niche going into it and saying, okay, we can, we can undercut those costs, but still provide enough functionality. It just wasn't true. You can't provide enough functionality mm -hmm. um, at that level. Okay. So up until now, given the, the, the change in um, direction mm -hmm. that you went, what's been the biggest challenge for you um, up until now, moving, moving in the API mm. open yeah. direction? Sure. sure. I, think, I think our initial, you know, when we looked at it, um, when we started to do it, like our big question was, you know, are PMS going to be amenable to us doing this? Like, we know that this is a problem. We know that like vendors are happy to pay to solve this problem. Are PMS going to allow us to do it? And specifically, those kind of big players. Um, and and actually, that that has turned out not to be the issue. They're very open, very amenable. This is a problem for them as well. Um, if you think about, say. Um, certain large PMS, they have like upwards of 50 integration requests per week um, and they can't deal with it, they don't want to. And so to funnel that through Impala is much easier for them. Um, I think for us, what's actually, what's actually come about is, is technically it's a, com it's a super complex task. If you think about not just, you know, what Impala effectively does is it tries to normalize these different, without getting like too boring and technical, tries to normalize these different systems. So, you know, where one might call something a, uh, you know, uh, an allocation, another calls it a group block, and yeah. another calls it something different, and we kind of normalize that together. Um, what's actually tricky is that the logic behind the systems is different. Um, so, uh, as an example, some may have, you know, reservations may be made up of many different bookings, and then some, there's no concept of that. There's just like one individual booking represents one room, and that's it. And so, to get all that together, normalize it, and then pass it on to someone, 
is like a fairly tricky task. Mm. But, mm. but luckily we're up to it. We're good. We're, we're engin- this is this is what this is why we changed because why we changed our focus is because we are engineers and this is the kind of problem that we yeah, solve. Yeah. So what's the ratio now of your um, I guess pass throughs, let's say connections. Mm. You've got PMSs on one side and, mm. and then the other let's call them third party providers. Yeah. Uh, what would be the ratio of PMSs versus the other uh, providers that you're actually working with now? Sure. So we have we have eight live PMS connections okay. um, to varying degrees of of, of depth, um, and then we have something like sixty registered vendors okay. on the other side. So, okay. Wow. So it's mostly it's mostly there's many more vendors than there are property managers. Of course. Managers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's What's actually interesting is that when we, you know, you I mean, if we were to sit down and write a list of like who those vendors might be. Um, you know, you can come up with some like fairly, fairly obvious ones, you know, upselling platforms and revenue management yeah. systems, etc. What you discover is actually there's like a huge need for hotel data from places you just wouldn't expect. So yeah, yeah. like loyalty platforms, people building air conditioning units for hotels. Yeah. Um, those are like the, those are fairly significant uh, customers for us, yeah. Right, right. Okay, can you talk us through a little bit how it all works? Mm-hmm. So if I'm a third party vendor or provider and sure. I have let's say an upselling solution similar mm-hmm. to an Oki. Yeah. Um, what's the process? How do I first init- initiate some kind of connection with you guys? Sure. How does it all work? So our goal um, is to make it as frictionless as possible um, for you to do that. So you can theoretically, you can sign up to Impala, get started, build your integration and connect to a hotel without really ever speaking to us. Okay. Um, now in practice, in the early days, it's slightly more friction, there's slightly more friction than that. Um, you know, we have, we, there is some manual conversation when you need to onboard a hotel, for instance. Uh, but, you know, if you're a vendor, if you are like an upsell platform, if there is an upsell platform out there, then yeah, you can just go to the website, you can see the pricing, you can see the documentation, you can build the integration yourself without ever getting in contact with us. Um, you know, and, and that's, and like there's a reason for that as well, because there shouldn't, there doesn't need to be any friction there. When we think about like things in, you know, terms that you and I have heard, being in hotel, I mean, you more than me, having been in hotel technology, things like certification and kickoff calls and technical calls, it doesn't have to happen. We don't have that outside hotel technology. I mean, maybe in some other industries as well, but like typically this is like a, an automated process, something that can be automated. Mm. And, and so that's our goal is to make it automated and frictionless. Apart from uh, uh, the, the typical issues that uh, integrations face today, wh- wh- where, where do you see the biggest challenges for this industry that you've experienced so far mm. um, that uh, I guess overall in our ecosystem of, of um, technology sure. that the industry faces? So I think, I, I think sales cycles are a really big problem because if, you know, even for, um, I guess, what we think of as ancillary, so non-core systems, uh, those ancillary pieces of software, those upsell platforms, those revenue, ma- some revenue management tools, anything that's not core, because the sales cycle is so long, it's very tricky to, it, the sales cycle doesn't necessarily line up with funding cycles, right? So, you know, if you're, a, um, if you're an investor, you're looking to see if your investment's a good investment and to follow on within 12 to 18 months. Now, if you're really crushing it as a hotel technology vendor, you've probably got it, you know, if you sign four big chains, et cetera, you've got, that's gonna take a long time, any sales cycle will. You've also then got to go out and actually run pilots with one, and then five, and then 20, and then eventually you might get to the, the, uh, the full chain. And so it's actually really difficult to, I think it's actually really difficult to fund, to get a company funded enough, um, or have investors that have a long enough um, outlook in order to kind of break through that okay we've got to run a lot of pilots we've got to get there but once we've done that we have you know 300 400 hotels and that's very lucrative for us. Mm-hmm. so i think that's a i think that's a big i think that's a big thing okay typically also i just what you mentioned there brings back something i wanted to also ask you how's the q a process mm. of um a, a third party provider working with you guys to connect to a pms mm. like you say that it's fairly frictionless mm. and, and can happen now relatively quickly mm. um but what's the validation mm-hmm. process how does that uh, where's that happen and, and what as in to confirm, as yeah, in to as confirm in to, that the data that's coming through exactly is yeah yeah so it's, because I, I could imagine that yeah. it would be, or it must be different for mm. different uh different pms's for example sure so w- if you think about if you think about the way that we normalize data, it also means that we have normalized input. So it, the input that we receive from a revenue management tool does not differ dependent on the PMS. 
okay. largely. Yep. Um, now there are some exceptions to that, um, but that's the that's the fairly standard model. Uh, because of that, it's easy for us to automate that confirmation because we're always getting it in the same way. It's easy for us to automate the confirmation. Um, we are in the early days. We're in you know Impala is as you say like two years old. Um, and, you know for you know, as a non-PMS, we're about a year old as well. So there's a lot of there's there's a lot for us to learn as well. But yeah, no, typically a lot of it can be automated away. Yeah. Okay. Um, big picture now. You've recently received another round of funding. Congratulations, mm -hmm. by you. the way. Um, how do you? Um, or how are you going to be investing that money into the company to grow it? In what areas specifically? Because I, I mean, sales perhaps is more of a mm. not. Some, I, I don't know. I could be wrong, but perhaps it's not a typical sales-driven type of company, if yeah. you know what I mean. So yeah, that's a really good point. I think there's there's two things that we have to make sure that we do. First of all, that is make sure that we build a robust product for it, because effectively we are the infrastructure that supports other people's systems. And so for us, heavy investment in engineering, we've already kind of, we've already more than doubled the size of our engineering team. Um, and, you know, we're, we're bringing on more people. So if there's any engineers out there that are interested in hotel technology, um, Impala is, uh, Impala's hiring. Um, but, you know, so hiring in engineering, we're also, of course, we are expanding the PMS offering. That's, you know, very important for us is to make sure that we can offer the systems that vendors need um, and so you know in partnerships we yeah we think of it as partnerships as opposed to um, sales necessarily but uh, yeah so engineering and, and partnerships okay okay uh, and in terms of competitiveness or com the competitive space mm. um, I can't think of anyone you're up against at the moment mm. um, is there a, is there a standout competitor that you're going up against in the industry so there's an old there's an old saying like in I guess that anyone that's ever gone out to like raise money will hear which is like no competitors no business right um, I think in terms of is there anyone else that's as low level as us? We're, we're very very low level we don't sell to hotels we don't really communicate too much with hotels beyond hey you know are you happy for this data to flow from one system to another virus um, you know, we're not a data warehouse. We're right there, just above the PMS. Um, and I don't think anyone else is that. I think there's other ways that you can connect to a PMS with the various drawbacks um, that we probably obviously suggest that they have. You know, if I think about, um, you know, Happy Cloud in, in, in the US and um, I, Snapshot Protel in, in, in Europe, you know, they, they do support some of the functionality that we do. Yeah. Um, but I think if you want, I think we're probably the only ones that are playing in that space of yeah. really low level direct yeah. data. Do, do you see the possibility of PMSs themselves perhaps mm. crouching into this area and being more open in that sense? And, and I mean, some of them are. Mm. If, if, if I, in my opinion, I think there are some of the newer PMSs, especially with the open platforms, are. Uh, making it very easy for the integrations to go directly to them. So, yep. um, how is that? Is that something that's a consideration for you, or do you still see that there's enough space in the area mm -hmm. that, that it's big enough for everybody? This is a really interesting question, and it's one you know that we spent a lot of time thinking about. What we've discovered is that we are, for many PMS, becoming that open platform for them. Right. So you know, the the kind of the big secret is that no. You know, no, no property management system that we speak to really wants to deal with its API, yeah. other than the ones that are API-led, right? Like the obvious, that, that is their main selling point. Yeah, yeah. That they don't want to deal with that because it comes with, you, you would not believe the customer support requirements that it comes with without any real direct revenue from them um, and taking time away from dealing with their customer, which is the hotel. It's not of interest for them. And so for us, when we say, when we effectively offer to them that solution, you know, it's a win-win for both. So. Yeah, we've. Yeah, I think they will become more open, but you know, we're seeing that happen through Impala. Mm -hmm. Are you finding more of the established, let's say, the larger mm -hmm. uh, PMSs in our space? Are they becoming? Are they shifting? Are they changing their thought process, or are they looking to you perhaps mm -hmm. to say, you know what, guys, you just do it for us. We don't want to know about it. Yeah, I think in many ways it's the latter. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I can't speak certainly for everyone, but what we see is that you know, oh, this is something we've been thinking about and we want to look at and we want to be more open, but. To be honest, building a PMS is hard enough. Yeah. We don't, like having integrate, having to deal with an entire integration side, yeah. is not something that, that they want to do. I, I think thought patterns have shifted, right? Thought patterns have shifted they from have, yeah. 
uh, you know, if you'd have gone and spoke to, you know, we just, you know, we connect, one of the, the big PMSs that we connect to is in the UK is Guestline, right? And if you'd have gone to Guestline five years ago and suggested this, I'm sure they'd have laughed you out of the building because their focus was, you know, okay, we, we want to offer a suite of tools. Exactly. You know, the hotelier will only come to us for whatever the technology needs are. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they weren't the only ones. And I think what you see is a mindset, is a, is a shift to, what is the natural evolution of any technology, which is mm. hyper specialization, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you see that across the board. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also it's it's just about opening the market up as well. Mm. And I think you know historically, it's a very good point you made about uh, using guest line as the example there. But they're not the only ones, as mm. you said. There's been many of them. They they just literally try to close that whole space off and mm. say to their customers, "You don't need to go anywhere else. Yeah. We'll do everything for you." Yeah. Um, and perhaps to a degree, they've done that well but mm -hmm. in other areas perhaps they're not the, the best people at that and i think that's i think that's where we're at today and i think it's a good thing and I, we need to keep everything open i'm a strong advocate for the open platform and um ensuring that we stay that way i think what's sorry, what's interesting on that is that you no one can do you can be the best at one thing maybe a couple if you're really yeah, lucky exactly you know you can't do everything so openness allows the end customer, which you know, for everyone here is a hotel, yeah. that openness allows a hotel to choose the solutions that best suit it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's good for everyone. Yeah, indeed. Okay, good. So the future for Impala, what's, what's, what's coming up down the road? What's, what's, what's the challenges for you? What, what is it that you want to achieve in the next, say, 12 months? Yeah. What's, what's the future look like for so, you guys? So for us, what we, where we want to be in 12 months' time is in a situation where, for the vast majority of property management systems, you don't have to worry about how to connect to them. Um, and for us, what's that actually mean? It means, okay, going out and, and, and being able to supply integrations to you know, national, the national level champion, the, so the national champion PMSs and the international PMSs. And we'll have some, some very, very exciting kind of news coming out of the kind of next few months um, about that. Um, yeah, and then, you know, really it's about, we can't go out and build an integration to 500, 1,000, however many PMSs there are. Um, and so what we'll be doing in the new year is, a, is giving a way for the smaller regional PMSs to integrate themselves to Impala. Okay. So effectively to create a system whereby, yeah. you know, you just don't have to think about integration anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah nice, good. Okay, and finally, what, uh, what would be your advice now as, you know, a person that's involved in a startup and growing a business, mm. if there was someone out there that has the similar idea of, I want to do my own thing, mm -hmm. what's, what would be your top three tips to them sure okay so i think i so, see i mean you mentioned that we, we we might talk about this and so initially immediately one thing comes to mind which is that go and find a co-founder right i have run i've run a business as a solo founder and i run now a business as a co-founder with charlie my my uh, co-founder in impala and the experience the second time around is just so much better and a lot of people that, you know, because it's hard to find a co-founder sometimes, right? If you're looking for a technical co-founder, it's impossible. And luckily, I didn't have that problem, but it's, it's impossible. And so people kind of give up and they're like, oh, you know, I'll just do it myself. Don't. And the reason for that is because, first of all, there's so much pressure, right? Someone described running a startup as like being a bunch of people in the middle of a lake with no wind trying to blow into a sail to make it move, right? And, and it's a very good analogy. <laughs> and it's not mine. I still it. And you, you can't do that alone. Yeah. It's so much pressure and you need to share that. The other thing is, if you have another co-founder, there's like this competition to work harder. So like I, I flew, I was on a flight this morning and so I was up at 5 a.m. You know, and I was sending some messages on our, our kind of our chat group um, on Slack. And immediately Charlie, my co-founder, who doesn't have a flight, no good reason to be up at 5 a.m responded and so you know that's like a, oh he's working just as hard as i am so if you have a co-founder less stress or you know shared stress and you get someone that works as hard as you for free effectively yeah, so yeah. you know yeah. um so that would be my first piece of advice and my second piece of advice and probably my third piece of advice as Fair well enough. yeah very good yeah ben stevenson thank you very much thank you great much. to have you on the show thank you and we look forward to seeing you around cheers Cheers. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell next, for, next to the subscribe button for your notifications. And until next time, bye for now.